Hi guys, welcome back, it's UK here. Um, a little while back I mentioned that I would be doing a Pathfinder game every other Sunday, basically spitting our group in half, as it were, uh, or our games in half. And uh, a week ago I started my game. So I thought, you know, I'm not great at doing um, kind of game reports or anything like that, but I thought it'd be quite nice uh, to just do a small video each time, just to like, kind of show how the game's going. Um, one of the reasons why I've, done, I've basically, uh, how to put it, changed my usual way of gaming uh, comes back to one of the recent vids that's been going around the RPG community about what is old school gaming. I've really got kind of fed up of the way that um, modern role playing is done. You know, it's so in depth, and, you know. Um, it's, it's options and it's realism and all this sort of stuff and I just I can't be doing with it anymore I like simple games much like D&D was when I first started and so I said to my guys this is what I want to do I'm going back to basics um, I'm running Pathfinder um, and I am using the Ultimate Combat Ultimate Magic and the Galarian setting but I said to the guys there's no power gaming you know just don't do it. You know, I don't mean play bland, boring characters, but don't push it. Um, I said, there's not going to be an overarching plot, although, you know, do me character backgrounds and I'll try and fit some stuff in. But there's no overarching plot. It's going to be basically, each session is an adventure. Boom. Sorted. You know, it might be a dungeon, it might be a city, it might be whatever. Um, it's going to be low treasure, uh, because, again, I'm fed up of the amount of magic that exists in D&D &D these days. You know, we never used to have it in my day. It used to be quite the magic light, but that might have just been my group and people I played with. Um, and I said, because there's no need for XP on the Pathfinder, you know, you don't spend it uh, on magic item creation or anything like that anymore. I said, you'll level when I want you to. So, which will basically be every two or three completed adventures. Uh, so, the characters we've got, I'll give you a run through. We have, uh, first session, I'm still getting used to the names, uh, Valerius, who is an elf ranger, and Valerius is a, well, he's put it down as atheist, um, although that's not quite true, because he does know that gods exist, uh, has basically turned his back on the gods uh, because of his love was killed, uh, and he's kind of blaming the gods, why did you let this happen, that sort of thing. Um, and that's going to come back and bite him at some point. Um, which is quite a cool character. We have Hajivar, who is Nasimar Cleric of Serenre, um, who has a small background that I think might tie into somebody else's if I can get around to it, uh, where his family was killed uh, by forces or persons unknown. Uh, he's quite the attractive sort of Asimar though, uh, as opposed to uh, Kendo, who is another Asimov, who's a party sorcerer, uh, who has probably was beautiful at one point, but is now uh, badly disfigured because of something that came in and took out his um, adopted family. And basically, uh, the knowledge of what it was has been scarred from his memory and his face has been blackened by what appears to be claw marks and scars and so forth. Um, and then we have Gabriel, who's a human fighter. Uh, no rogue, so that could be interesting if something comes up along those lines, so they're going to have to be careful about traps and so forth. <coughs> uh, pardon me. Um, and basically, uh, what I said to him was, you are, for those that know Galarian, you are in the uh, region of Verizia, and you are hired by a Verizian merchant named Biznik and his daughter uh, as caravan guards. The characters have been given uh, money up front, which is how they bought their equipment, and they will basically be escorting his caravan on his journey uh, through the towns to uh, from Magnamar through to Corvosa and back again, which will basically take a season and a bit uh, before they rest over for winter. And they'll have adventures on the way sort of thing, and then they'll work out where they're going from there. Um, we did a small preview for two of the players, uh, the session before we actually started, because uh, we had a free evening, uh, we didn't have an actual game on. Uh, so I did the first bit, they went to the town, they left Magnamar and arrived at the town of Sandpoint for a festival. 
uh, and ended up foiling a plan by some of the local goblins to basically tunnel into the basement of the Trident Inn uh, to steal its ale and then when everyone was drunk during the festival to probably steal small children and pets or something. Uh, but also they found that the goblins had un inadvertently uncovered some horrible alien thing which had been buried for thousands of years under the town and now woken up due to the goblins mining, which they had to then uh, defeat. Uh, fairly simple uh, and it got them into their characters and it worked quite well. But the first actual session uh, led them to the next town along, which is a place called Caldwell, uh, based off of a basic D&D red box module called Castle Caldwell, which I've basically rewritten. Uh, they arrive in town, uh, basically it's a small, well, town, small village, and there is a abandoned kind of fortified manor up on a hill about a quarter of a mile away. Uh, they arrived, uh, Besnick gave them some coin to basically book rooms and uh, get food, uh, and Besnick encounters while he's there an old friend of his, a Chalaxian merchant named Pavo, who it turns out came through this way a few months before, saw the abandoned uh, manor house, uh, learned that the family died when the plane swept through this area a century ago and has basically used most of his for uh, fortune in purchasing the title deeds to this manor. Uh, so he can call himself Nord, although he has no actual control or claim over the town. But he will be basically in charge of looking after the area. But the place has been taken over by a band of goblins. And he wants somebody to go in and clear it out. Well, as it happens, Besnik is going to be here for a few days. And he happens to know some people who are likely to be looking for some adventure as well as a few extra coin. Uh, and so... Uh, the party agree after a little bit of chat and talking to some of the locals to find out the stories. Uh, basically, the goblins don't bother the town because you know there's only a handful of goblins up there, and there's you know 50, 60 people in this town. They wouldn't stand a chance. But they do attack travellers crossing the moors, and they do steal sheep and things like that. Um, so the following morning, they head up there, uh, and basically the way I've done it, it was it was a fairly sealed building. There's a few upper um, small windows at the top, but because it's uh, about six feet up the walls, but because it's a fortified manor house, there's no sort of like obvious windows to leap through uh, if the place was attacked, except for one large stained glass window leading into the chapel. Um, they headed in. They had uh, encounters with a number of small goblin bands, you know, two or three at a time. Nothing they couldn't ha uh, handle. Um, they encountered the leader of the goblins, a third level cleric, uh, which was a rather amusing encounter actually. Uh, I thought a third level cleric is on his own, he's not got anybody else, it might be a bit of a, a challenge, but they shouldn't have any real trouble dispatching him. Uh, could they hit him in combat? No. Uh, straight away, uh, Valerius the elf, uh, who I say is a ranger who had taken goblin uh, as his favourite enemy, hence my use of them. Uh, Unfortunately, rushed in and got hit by a cause fear spell, uh, which sent him uh, fleeing from the castle for eight rounds. So he didn't even get a chance to, <laughs> to do anything. Uh, uh, the fighter uh, charged in, only to be hit by a whole person, which basically left the sorcerer and the cleric to try and deal with him. They got, him down to, they got the goblin down to half wounds. He cast a cure like wounds on himself, which they failed to hit on their attacks of opportunity so he healed himself back up 12 uh, they got him back down to half hit points the fighter came round from his whole person uh, the goblin pulls out a potion of cure like wounds which he had made they again fail all their attacks of opportunity he heals himself another 12 so the f <laughs> he actually became quite a bit of a pain in the backside for them uh, and they really enjoyed that encounter when they finally managed to put him down um, there were a couple of smaller encounters uh, with giant fire bugs, basically. Nothing, again, they just squished them. Uh, they managed to avoid one encounter with a spider swarm in one of the locked bedrooms. Um, but importantly, there was a basement, basically, an area where the family had begun to build a tomb. Uh, the door was arcade locked. Uh, 
I hadn't even considered, because there's a password you can use, and I hadn't even considered that anyone might think of the password, so I didn't bother writing it in. I just marked down in my notes the DC for picking the lock, had their own, or breaking the door down. Uh, but in the chapel, they'd found a statue of um, one of the gods, uh, Iomide, I believe, and the family crest uh, was on the pedestal with the family motto of, without justice we are nothing. And um, one of them had the idea of, maybe that's the password. And I thought about it and went, actually, yeah, what a, that's quite a cool idea. So I decided that justice was the trigger word. So as soon as they said that, the spell dissipated and they were able to open the door. Um, and they were able to get down into the basement. And basically, or I say the tomb rather than the basement. Uh, now there are skeletons down there which were used to build the tomb. Why did I use skeletons? Because the family wasn't evil. I don't know. It just seemed like a nice idea that you get down there there were skeletons. Again, this is what I mean by back to basics. Not a lot of stuff needs to make a lot of sense. Um, but basically these guns hadn't uh, been told to stop working so they'd kept expanding. Uh, so what should have been rooms were now kind of like small caves. Uh, uh, which led us to our second fight, basically, or uh, second amusing fight. Uh, I'm always of the opinion that there should be, you know, that the um, similar to what the 3.5 and Pathfinder rulebook says, it's, you have a number of encounters that are the same sort of level as the party. You have one or two that are higher, then you have one that's uh, a, a tad higher than that to give them a real challenge just once in a fight, um, once in a scenario rather. And so I decided that. During the construction of the place, the family had got their hands on a gelatinous cube and that was used to go around the corridors and clean up any debris or anything. Well, that's been locked in a room since the family died and it's extremely hungry. And they managed to find this room and open it, which led them through a long, thin, narrow corridor, um, which basically had the sorcerer stuck on one side of an open door, gelatinous cube next, then the other three members of the party. On the other end of the corridor from where they was with another door and one of them, uh, the fighter, decides to throw himself through that uh, to get away and finds himself in a room with uh, four or five skeletons. Uh, so they're stuck with that in front of them and a gelatinous cube behind them. Um, eventually they manage to uh, force through uh, the sorcerer's spells enough damage on the gelatinous cube that it decides it's going to back off into his room and uh, they shut the door and decide that they're going to finish off the skeletons. Um, which would be fair enough, but I assumed that the Jazz Cube is extremely hungry after a hundred years, uh, and so it's going to try and break this door down. And I decided it's only got a strength of 10, it's going to need a natural 20 to do it. As soon as I got into a fight with the skeletons, I got a natural 20 for the Jalanus Cube, and it smashed the door in. And starts to follow them. Uh, which led to an interesting point in the fight with the skeletons where the fighter basically has forced himself up against the door to hold the gelatinous cube from getting in. Um, which ended up being one of the most amusing scenes <laughs> I've had in a D&D uh, game for a long time. Um, uh, they managed to defeat that in the end through the use of the sorcerer's magic and they managed to defeat the skeletons, which is pretty much where we wrapped up. So they've explored the upper levels of the castle and they've pretty much halfway through the uh, tomb area and we're going to come back to the rest of it next uh, this Sunday uh, everyone thoroughly enjoyed it it's it's very different uh, not worrying about all the things that you normally worry about as a GM or as a player in a game of uh, in a fantasy role playing game. Normally, there's so much. You know, if you watch any of the vids by people in the RPG Brigade or elsewhere on YouTube or any other posts that people make on forums, they, they tell you all this stuff to make your game better. And quite frankly, we've thrown all that stuff out the window, and our game was probably the best gaming session I've had in many years. Uh, simply because it was simple, it, as I say, back to basics. It was just simple, uh, you had your quest, you had the keep, you had the tomb underneath it. You know, what else do you need? Uh, and it worked really well, as I say, everybody really enjoyed it and we're looking forward to the next game this week. Uh, which means that by the, they're going to finish it fairly easily, I think. There's only probably a half dozen rooms left to do. Uh, 
before I've completed it, and then they move on to the next scenario, um, <coughs> which I've already begun to map up and write. I just need to finish doing it, which is going to be my plan either for this evening or tomorrow. Um, I shall do a read after that and see how they've got, let you know. Uh, but that's basically the, uh, well, it was going to be a brief recap of this particular campaign. Uh, I hope it's been somewhat interesting. Uh, and uh, I hope you continue to follow the exploits of my brave adventurers. Until next time, take care.